Cora TV. The world is thinking. This is a largely American gathering here, although with a significant international presence. And one theme of many, many discussions has been the current situation of the U.S. moral standing, the U.S. soft power, the U.S. reputation of the rest of the world. Some non-Americans saying, oh, you Americans are beating up too much on yourselves. Others saying, no, 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 until you regain the moral high ground, you're going to be in terrible trouble of struggling against terrorism, trying to do anything else you want. Drawing on your standing as the most popular man on earth, I wonder if, if you would. What should you say that one more time? I'll get sick. <laughs> Half of them are already sick. So go ahead. What what story should the United States be telling now? How? exactly can it do better in this war of ideas, war of reputation, war of moral standing? Well, well, first of all, I think we have to realize there will be times when as long as we're in the, the position we're in, or even when others may acquire some greater parity with us on a military and economic or political plane, there'll always be times when we will be making decisions that some people won't agree with. So I think, but, but it, they need to think that in general, we wish them well, and that we are trying to take the world to a place where everybody on earth has a chance to live their dreams and to pursue their faith and to preserve their culture and to make a decent living. So, I, to me, that's the first thing. But people just get a sense of that. I remember once I, I was in Sri Lanka talking to one of the parliamentary leaders of the Tamil Tigers, and we had him on the terrorist list the whole time I was president. And he said, you know, you had us on the terrorist list the whole time you were president, but I liked you anyway. <laughs> and I said, you did? He said, yeah. I said, why? He said, because I always figured that you wanted my people to have a fair break here that you thought the Hindus should be treated fairly. Now, th that, I don't mean to be self-serving, I just, that's the first thing that came to my mind, but the point is people get a sense of, they want to, you want people to admire, not resent America. And when they disagree with us, you want them to disagree with us in the way you have a disagreement within your family or your business or any other worker. You want them to think basically we're the good guys on the right side of history and we're pulling for them. Now, that, therefore, I think this is a lot more about, about a lot more than Iraq. This is also about the fact that we said we were not interested in Kyoto or the International Criminal Court or the ABM Treaty or the, or the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. Uh, it was about rhetoric, you know. But l let me just do the flip side here. I promise you that America is more popular among people who've been personally touched by the president's uh, AIDS program. There are two Muslim countries where our standing is better than it was a couple years ago, and they're both important. One, the largest, Indonesia, and the other, the most troublesome, Pakistan, because it's home to so many Taliban and Al-Qaeda sympathizers, and the reasons are the tsunami and the earthquake. I mean, you know, I saw this myself. When former President Bush and I took our first trip over to the tsunami area, and we were up there in Aceh in Indonesia, and, you know, I, I went to, we visited these little kids, and part of their therapy, if they lost their families during the tsunami, was to draw pictures of what they saw. Picture after picture after picture. American military helicopters dropping food not bombs, dropping letter, ladders to get people out of isolated places. Uh, you meet the USAID workers there, or all these people from religious or non-religious NGOs. Or George Bush and I even met two different groups of people who were just represented their own small businesses back in America who were in the water purification business. And they just quit what they were doing and came there because they read that kids might die of cholera or dysentery or diarrhea, and they didn't want to happen. They just showed up and said, send me someplace, and I'll clean the water. And not surprisingly, all the people saw us as people because they thought we saw them as people, 
and religion and politics and geography and none of that stuff mattered very much. Now, I don't want to be naive about this. When we got our backs against the wall, we're all differently turned. But we need to remember that lesson. And we need to try to show that face to the world. They need to think we're pulling for them. We need to say do the same thing in economics. Uh, look, the one reason Hugo Chavez has got a lot of juice in Latin America besides having a lot of money to throw around is there's, you know, Latin Americans have not benefited very much from globalization, the average walking around person. And, you know, we take the position in globalization that all natural resources everywhere should be subject to free trade and investment, i.e., if you got the oil, we should be able to buy it or invest in your oil wells. But we take a very different view when it comes to intellectual property. And it's fine if you're an American, but if you're Brazil and you're trying to find ways to keep all your kids alive who are HIV positive or an African country with a far higher investment, you know, you've got to forgive them if they have a different view of this. So at least we have to give people the sense that we know what it's like to walk in their shoes. And we need to realize you can't have a global economy without a global social policy. And in an interdependent world, you can't kill, jail, or occupy all your enemies, so you've got to have more friends and fewer enemies, even while you've got a tough security policy. And that's what I think is the most important thing. And I, I don't, again, look, I did things that people didn't agree with. You got to, if you're American at this moment in history, you can't possibly please everybody all the time. But they get a sense about whether you're pulling for them or not, and whether you want them to share your future. I don't want to embarrass him, but he's not in office anymore, so I can't hurt him. But that's what General Powell did when he was Secretary of State. When he went around the world, people said, that guy is on my side. It didn't matter what he was talking about or whether they agreed with him. As long as we're the biggest dog on the block, we need people out there doing that. They need to feel that about America. <laughs>